Hi guys. Today I'll be talking about the Womack, OSCAN, and EAMS-2 indexes. They are osteoarthritis indexes and all patient reported outcomes. We've seen several examples of patient reported outcomes already, so I'm not gonna get into that too much. The Western Ontario and McMaster University's Arthritis Index, or the WOMAC, is widely used in the evaluation of hip and knee osteoarthritis. It's a self-administered questionnaire, traditionally done with paper and pencil, but it can be taken over the telephone or computer. It consists of 24 items divided into three subscales, pain, stiffness, and function, with the number of items seen on the slide there. The areas of assessment include ADLs, functional mobility, gait, pain, general health, and quality of life. The WOMAC takes approximately 12 minutes to administer. However, as we know, this can vary based on person to person. Um, the ages that the WOMAC can be used with were adolescents of 13 to 17 years of age, adults ages 18 to 64, and elderly adults ages 65 and over. The ICF domains that this would fall under are body functions, activity, and participation. Um, and to the right is actually the entire WOMAC survey form. It's pretty short, as you can see, um, and we'll get into scoring in just a second. So to score the WOMAC, um, first of all, it's available in visual analog and like art box forms. The one shown on the previous slide was a like art box style form. The test questions are scored on a scale of zero to four, which correspond to a score of zero being none and extreme being four. Um, the scores for each subscales are then summed up with a possible score range of zero to 20 for pain, zero to eight for stiffness, and zero to 68 for physical function. Typically, a sum of the scores for all three subscales gives a total Womack score, with higher scores on the Womack indicating worse pain, stiffness, and functional limitations. The psychometrics, as you can see here, are pretty good. Um, there's a study done with 117 outpatients with osteoarthritis. Um, the ranges show that it is consistent, reliable, and valid. The Arthritis Impact Measurement Scale, or AIMS-2, uses physical, social, and emotional well-being as a measure of outcome in arthritis. There are nine scales, mobility, physical activity, dexterity, household activity, social activities, activities of daily living, pain, depression, and anxiety. Um, the picture that you see to the right is just one page of it. It's the hand and finger function and arm function page. There is an original version of the AIMS, a shortened version, um, an expanded version, which is the AIMS 2. There's a short form of the AIMS 2, a child version, and the version for the elderly. I am just going to be going over the AIMS 2. Um, the AIMS has been translated into many languages, including Portuguese, Canadian, French, Italian, Spanish, French, um, Swedish, and many more. The number of items in the scale um, are 101 in the AIMS 2. For the AIMS 2 short form, there's 26. Um, there are 12 subscales in the AIMS 2. The developmental target is that it was developed in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis to assess the outcome of healthcare. The ICF domains are activity limitation and participation restriction. So scoring for the AIMS-2 is a little bit more complicated than the others. Um, so to kind of break it down, responses on the AIMS-2 are kind of mixed around so that the numbers seen to score the answers don't always indicate poor health status. So on some of the other ones, if you have a zero for something that might indicate that you have a poor health status, but not on the AIMS-2. When you're scoring, it's important to make sure each item is scored correctly, taking into account which questions the scale that is seen is reversed for, which will make sense in a second. Once the raw score is found by adding up um, each response, um, the scores of each item are added together. The range of the scores will be depend on the number of items in the scale. The score range is shown on table one in the image on the slide. I realize it is pretty small, um, but you might wanna look on the PowerPoint and kind of zoom in. And then in order to get the zero to 10 range for each section, 
you have to do a little bit of math, but don't worry, it's not too hard. Um, and the following videos will explain it a little bit more. But overall, you'll get a score of zero to 10 for each section after normalization, um, which gives a total health score of zero to 60. Zero indicating good health status and 10 and 60% representing poor health status. It takes around 10 minutes to score, and once you get the hang of it, it's really not too hard. In order to get the raw scores, you simply just add them up, taking into account the questions that have a reversed scale. So 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 again because of the reversed scale plus 2 gives us a raw score of 15. So in that video, I had highlighted the questions that the scale is reversed for. So instead of all days being one, all days would now be five and so on. Um, to find out which questions the scale is reversed for, you have to refer to the user manual. Once you have calculated your raw score, you can plug it into the formula given for each section in the user manual. For this case, our raw score was 22. So 22 minus five times 0.5 equals 8.5 giving us a normalized score of 8.5. So for this one, um, just to kind of clarify a few things, each scale, so this one was like mobility, walking, and bending. Um, each one has its own formula. So on the first slide that went over scoring, that really tiny picture, um, it kind of breaks down each scale's um, formula. For question 59, you have to take into the account the numbered answers as you score each item. For the ones I have underlined in orange, you multiply by one. The ones underlined in blue, you multiply by 0.25, and the one underlined in green, you multiply by 0.5. Question 59 is designed to see if you need to do an adjusted score. Scale scores may be modified to adjust for the fact that health status problems in a particular area of function may be due to problems other than arthritis. Item 70 is comorbidity measure. Comorbidities in the AIMS-2 may be totaled through item 70. The guideline shown on the slide may be then used when considering the use of arthritis adjusted scores. So this is a picture from the user manual to show how you get the physical subscale score, effect, symptom, social interaction, and role. Um, so I did the little bit of math down below on um, the screen based off of the, <laughs> the form that I filled out real quick. So you would just take the normalized scores found for each one um, after you plug them all into that formula and then add it up to get a score for each one. And it should fall into that zero to 10 range. If it doesn't, then something went wrong. So the AIMS-2 psychometrics, there was a study done with 625 patients, um, 336 with rheumatoid arthritis and 108 with osteoarthritis. The others had other conditions or no, no diagnosis. Um, it has good psychometric properties overall. What also makes it unique is that it includes measures of satisfaction with health and additionally, the patient's priorities for improvement. The full length versions are quite time consuming to complete. The AIMS-2 did take a while to fill out when I was um, doing the example form. Um, and it should be noted that the short form for the AIMS-2 has similar psychometric properties to the full length versions. So it might be more appropriate for um, somebody who can't sit and do the form for that long. Um, overall, it's valid and reliable. So for the OSCAN or the Australian Canadian Osteoarthritis Hand Index, I couldn't find an actual copy of the assessment online. However, I did find the area it assesses. You'll see more about that on the next slide. But um, it consists of 15 questions to assess acute or chronic pain in the hands and it was developed for patients with osteoarthritis. It has three subscales, pain, stiffness, and physical function, um, and takes approximately five minutes to administer. It's actually available in a five-point Likert form, a 10 visual analog, or 11-point numerical rating scale format. So as I said, there's three subscales, and the items in each subscale are listed here. Um, 
each item would have a scale attached to it like you saw in the other forms. So for example, the five point, five point Likert form. So each one, so at rest would have a five point Likert form and so on. Um, the responses to each one would just be added up just like the other ones and a total score would be found for each section and overall. Higher scores indicate a greater level of disability, lower scores would indicate lower levels of disability. So the psychometrics for OSCAN, there was a study done with 50 patients with osteoarthritis of the hand, and it was found to be both valid and reliable, as you can see with the numbers on the screen. So to kind of compare and contrast the three indexes, um, as we know, they're all <laughs> osteoarthritis indexes and patient reported outcomes. So that's something they all have in common. Um, the AIMS-2 really takes the whole body into consideration as well as quality of life and improvement. Um, the OSCAN is really specific to the hand. It's shorter than the AIMS-2 um, and only has three areas assessed. The WOMAC, more specifically geared towards the hip and knee, um, but both the WOMAC and AIMS-2 addressed a lot of ADLs, such as dressing and showering, toileting, and ADL, I ADLs, sorry, like household chores and transportation. The AIMS-2 just went into that um, a little bit more than the WOMAC. Um, the WOMAC, again, was more focused on the hip and knee rather than the whole body. Um, AIMS-2 and OSCAN both had physical function and pain assessed and also address some more hand and upper extremity specific items. So some biases and other notes. Overall, they really made an effort to eliminate a lot of biases as it's many um, languages that it's translated into. Um, they are patient reported, however, so there could be misinterpretation of some questions. Um, some like the AIMS-2 may be more time consuming, which is just kind of another note, not so much a bias. Um, something that I kind of noticed is that the AIMS-2 is a little bit harder to score. So if the therapist or clinician was kind of rushing or doing it real fast at the end of the day, it may lead to errors in scoring. Um, I did think of some cultural considerations. So we have learned in the past that some cultures don't really value independence a ton. So rating something lower might indicate that they are unable to do it, but it might not be a priority for them. So that would be important to take into consideration. Also, not everybody does all of the items on each thing. Although um, the Womack and the OSCAN being shorter, most of the items on there are pretty common. So some questions that I have um, are here on the screen. So why do you think there are so many questionnaires for the same thing? Which one do you see yourself using in the future practice? And why that one and not the others? And besides osteoarthritis and actually rheumatoid arthritis, would you consider using these scales for another condition and why? And these are my references. Thank you for watching.